it works, I tested it last night. Let's check the videos to see for yourself. Here we see the moon. On the left side it is with the platform on. On the right side platform off. So, what is going on here? I've been thinking lately I should be adding some tracking to my Dobsonian telescope. Generally, if you want to add tracking, we have a few options. Why do we need tracking? If you have a look at this video of Jupiter or the Moon, it's moving and it's moving fast. That's because of magnification, because of the rotation of the planet, things are moving very fast across the screen. Ideally, you want to build something to counter that rotation of the planet Earth. So our options are thousands of dollars for a real solution, a go-to solution, or $500 for two pieces of wood. Either of those choices I didn't like. What you see here cost only $100, including everything. Okay, the Mac is not included. And the headphones as well. So, uh, the first thing first was the theory. If you're a little bit nerd like me, you will want to understand how to produce one of these. That's the most important thing, that's the segment here at the bottom of this base. It's relatively simple, you take a big circle, you apply some mathematical operations to it. Check uh, the theory below of Mr. Rainer Vogel. And that's it, you draw it, you put the segments, cut them out and you're ready to go. The second more accurate theoretical solution is through derivations. Mr. Hank did this one in Science Lab. You can see the really nice animation, we will have a closer look today. And he found out that the approximation techniques are very 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 close, like 0.1% close to the derivation techniques. That's when it comes down to the theory. Also, I downloaded some ready-to-build plans by Mr. Westmarsh from Stargazers Forum and we are pretty much ready to go. All I have to do now is draw the plans on this piece of board and after that cut it uh, based on the plans. But of course, I was not satisfied with that. I needed to understand the details, the theory behind it, so then we are not just building stuff, we are understanding what we are doing here. I was too lazy to cut this down manually and I figured out I have this $20 drill. The cable is broken but doesn't matter, it hasn't killed me yet. And it works sometimes. <laughs> and on AliExpress I found this for like 9 bucks. It transforms the circular drill into a wood cutting machine. All I have to do is mount this, put some... Uh, there these are called and it cut through the wood. Next important thing, we need to figure out how to motorize this uh, platform. As you can see, it's moving left and right with the motor. Two possible ways to do a motor. A, you can build one yourself out of Lego bricks. I did this last year. We can have a closer look at uh, this one, how it works. Pretty impressive stuff. You calculate all the gears based on the speed of the planet and you calculate the speed of the motor then you put a small controller to regulate the speed of the motor and off it goes and it works i tested it on the telescope it kept saturn for a couple of minutes in the eyepiece and then i got hold of it another option and i admit the more comfortable one is to buy a solution which has all of this integrated inside of here there are many small um, gears just like this uh, making the same thing possible it also makes it easier to mount to the platform. Many people have already used it. It uses a battery like this and it's much quieter. Sometimes the ready-built <laughs> way is a lot cheaper than doing it yourself. This uh, horrible thing cost me 40 bucks uh, to build. Uh, this one cost me like 37 completely built out of the box, it's working. This is how a planetary motor works. We have lots of gears which are reducing the speed of the motor and increasing the torque. Even with this small toy you can move tens of kilograms of torque. And here is a very small planetary motor. It has some more gears inside. 
and this is a controller which regulates the speed. Now this is just to give you an idea of what is inside this professional solution. Yeah, simple Celestron motor, 37 bucks of AliExpress. Of course, a lot better, a lot more comfortable than dragging all this Lego with you. You will need these, you can buy them also on AliExpress. Some wood stuff, wood, wood cutting stuff. Then we have the pivot at the front of the platform. A little compass because uh, orienting the platform is very important knowing where is north this is the wood cutting stuff and these are the plants that's pretty much it it's not that complicated really it's not rocket science and this is how it and this is how it's going to look like once it's completed yeah these are the motions really nice work by mr hank to visualize this and to check that the approximation techniques by Mr. Rayner are very, very, very close to the actual solution. Let's get down to drawing business. ready and we are ready for cutting this is the bottom segment will be cut here and this is the top a lot simpler thing seems to be working now we need to cut it problem top Board broke, so I will need a new one. Meantime, these are the segments. Now we will be dusting them off until perfection. So this damn thing completely broke. I think I overcooked it, so I have to finish it manually. It's just a few more centimeters, so and one of the segments will need to be done manually. And also, I'll try to fix the broken board. Maybe I can still save this project. We'll see. I'm having to finish it manually. It's much like that. Just like your old days. So things are coming along nicely. Not as precise as I would like to. There are some imprecisions here, plus minus five centimeters here and there. The most important piece is finished. These are the segments. The broken board, I patched it up, seems to be holding, so I think this will be working. The next part of the project is I have to put these at the right spot. It has to be quite exact, so we optimize the travel and the tracking of the platform. The top will come like this. And as you can see, it's already working. Now we just need to fine tune it. Cut a couple of pieces here, here. Mount the motor, ready it here. There is place for it. We'll just turn it a little, a little bit here. At the top, we will create the pivot. And that should be it. Maybe do some uh, cosmetic cutting here and there. And we should be good to go. Let's continue tomorrow. Okay, so these need to be cut. Coming along nicely. Here will be the pivot. Now we need to design it. Another day on our progress. I think I'm about 90% done. It's basically done. It is working, right? This is how it goes. Amazing. I just need to tie in a couple of bolts. Everything is precise. It's not as bad as I feared. The broken board doesn't matter. The motor needs to be mounted and after that just some cosmetic cutting from the side. So let's tighten everything out and let's have a closer look. 
There we go, perfectly tracking. Even when it's tilted, it is pretty stable. It will not topple over, very important. <coughs> There it is, that is one completed platform. Really proud of myself of this project. It works, I tested it last night. Let's check the videos to see for yourself. Here we see the moon. On the left side it is with the platform on. On the right side platform off. First we are looking at a 200 magnification. Already you can see the difference. But if we go to 400 and even 800 magnification, then you will see a really incredible difference. At 800, of course, even with the platform, there is a little bit of movement, a little bit of drift, but this can be for many reasons. It can be because of the variability of the motor sometimes, it can be mostly due to alignment, it has to be aligned perfectly to north, it has to be also aligned uh, horizontally at zero degrees, but I mean, come on, at 800 uh, magnification, that's not really a realistic uh, magnification to use with this telescope or any telescope, but it will stand on this platform. Just to give you an idea of how sensitive uh, this is, the higher up you go, a little bit you can notice it. Now let's have a look at how this thing works and how you can build one yourself for about $90. First you will need to visit the site of Mr. Rainer Vogel, as he explained all the theory, all the plans. You can get some ready to print and ready to use plans. The problem is he has made a little bit of a mistake in his segments. The segments are the key thing that all makes all of this work for your specific latitude. It will work only at specific latitudes, from 40 until 56. If you are watching this video and you need a segment for your latitude and you leave from 40 until 56, drop me a comment and I can modify the plans that uh, the strainer Google made and create a fixed segment for you because he did make a little bit of a uh, mistake there and the segments are not exactly correct. But if you decide that they are good enough for you, many people have printed them and you can use them directly from the plants, it will not impact you too much. Literally the error is like 1 or 2% of tracking, which, which is nothing, probably will not notice it with your eyes. But if you are a perfectionist, then uh, we can have the exact segment. Okay, so what you will need to build this plot for? First, you will need a motor. This normal Celestron EQ2 motor, I'll link it from AliExpress, very cheap, very nice, about $40. The next key thing you will need is these wheels, yeah, you will need these wheels with some iron rods, the rods have to be 8mm thick and about 10cm long, so you need some space here as well as going all the way to the motor. You will also need this adapter from 5mm to 8mm, again AliExpress couple of bucks. On the other side is the same thing, two more wheels and one more of these uh, rods. Also you will need one big piece of wood, I recommend plywood. The wood I have used is not very ideal because it breaks sometimes. At the top it's very simple, you will need to drill a little bit of a hole here so that the top, uh, the top segment will come here. Now if we look at the top and turn it around, again a couple of key things. On the top here you will need some kind of a bolt which is circular so it fits nicely into the hole below. Yeah, when it's turning, because it's turning and pivoting at the same time. And here are the key things, the segments. I cut them out from wood, no problem there whatsoever. Put some rubber so it's smooth. These you will print them 
on A4 paper, cut them and cut them then into wood. And these are different for every different latitude depending on where you live at. These are 49 and here. This you will probably not need, this is where my board broke so I had to fix it but it's working well. That's all, mission accomplished. See you next time in some of the next videos. The GSO unboxing of the 12 inch and the eyepiece of 30 mm compared. And just a little bit of preview for some of my next videos. I just got these beautiful eyepieces. Ultra flat field 30 mm. It's a clone of uh, or very similar to APM ultra flat field. We have also some airfoil 14 mm eyepiece. I'll be comparing it to a cheap Kellner 32 mm and also to the GSO Super View that comes from the 12 inch. Why do I have this one that comes from the 12 inch? <laughs> because the 12 inch is in my cellar and bought it yesterday. That's one big telescope, pretty heavy as well. Wow. So if you're interested to do these eyepieces or getting a review of the 12 inch GSO, drop subscribe, drop like and I will be making some videos in the very near future of unboxing of GSO and comparing all of these 32mm 2-inch eyepieces uh, to see which one is the best, why some of these cost $180, why some of these cost $40 or $90 in this case.